the first rays of light brighten the sky, nudging the people to rise up to a new day in the city of Port Hackett. It is morning yet on creation day in the River State capital, famously called the Garden City. Flyovers in the ancient city, but there is an unwanted visitor hanging in the sky. The early in the morning, that one the worst. If you want to wipe yourself, in the car the blast on the cover the whole screen. No if you see. Sometimes to drive early morning, me I avoid them. Even if you know your wiper water, it will not clean. The prevalence of soot in the city has dominated social discourse in the past few years. This soot has been prevalent in River State since um, 2017 and it's been on till this minute as we speak. We have so many causes of soot, generally speaking, but the one that is in Port Harcourt that is prevalent that we are seeing over the past few years is mainly caused by gas flaring and artisanal refining. In the last maybe six years, plus or minus, uh, Port Harcourt has had one of the worst air quality rankings in the world. So this is what is happening to us in Port Harcourt and it's, it's had all kinds of implications from economic to health challenges. Soot, also known scientifically as black carbon, is produced by incomplete hydrocarbon combustion. Residents of Port Hackett seem to have a similar experience in the morning. I came to visit my friend in her house. I came out of the bedroom. I didn't even look at the mirror. So she was like, Priye, what's coming out of your nose? And I was like, what is that? I didn't even check the mirror. The next thing I saw, I saw black stuff coming out of my nose. And she was like, use a wipe to clean it. I cleaned it. It was really horrible. Like, I was scared. And she was like, person does it to be careful for this protocol. Every morning when you wake up, the, when you poke your nose, the things that come out from it, very black. And so when you brush your teeth and you cough out, the things that come out from your throat, it's so black. That means if something that's coming out from your throat is so, so black, I wonder what is inside your, how your system will look like. Gas flaring contributes to pollution and soot in River State, but artisanal refining is also a major factor in a city with a disturbing statistics of air pollution. Every child born in Port Harcourt today is already a smoker. You're already smoking soot, black soot. Even the fetus is taking in soot from the womb of um, a pregnant woman. Right from birth, my baby has been breathing through her mouth. And it's not been very easy for me as a mother. There are some nights we don't sleep because she has this difficulty trying to breathe. And it also affects her feeding. And because she cannot eat well, it's also affecting her weight. My husband is a medical doctor and we've been going through this. Imagine other babies who are not close to medical health care, what they are going through. On Friday, the 17th of May, 2019, the River State Government set up a technical committee with the Commissioner for Environment, Professor Rosalind Koya, as chairman. The committee identified 12 sources of soot in the state. Refineries, fertilizer companies, illegal artisanal refineries, setting a blaze of illegally refined petroleum products by the military, non-road emissions, vehicular emissions, gas flaring, tire burning to retrieve steel wires for recycling, meat roasting with tires in abattoirs, asphalt plants, refuse burning at dump sites, petrochemical industries. These are 12 identifiable sources of this suit. The work of artisanal refiners is top on the list with gas flaring. And what we need to do now is to ensure 
that these sources are eradicated, and then we will have a, a, a clean bill of air in River State. The health implications of the hazard are staggering as well as disturbing. A study that was done in 2018 by Laura et al. in University of Portacourt Teaching Hospital, they found out that majority of males that reside in Portacourt have structural abnormalities of their spermatozoa. And that simply says that they can no longer impregnate their wives. So by now, the statistic would have even, even been worse. If we stop the suit now, as we speak, the effects of the ones we've inhaled will live with us for years to come. So I can assure you that in the next 10, 15 years, the prevalence of cancer, lung cancer, skin cancer, liver cancer, will be exponentially high. There is much worry about the safety of public health in Port Hackett. But what about the economic implications on the people living in the city and its environs, and in fact, other parts of River State where there are reported cases of soot in the air? Small businesses are winding down. The recent statistics that came uh, indicate that a very high percentage of revenue that ought to have accrued to the state, federal, and local governments have been fitted away by these drain pipes. There is a negative benefit that goes to those who are operating, and those are the resistant forces who are trying to sabotage the governor's effort. The impact of soot attributed to oil theft is a major loss of revenue for the River State government and the Nigerian economy because taxation from business activities in these sectors is lost. In 11 months, Nigeria has recorded a deficit of 193 million barrels of crude oil. This is an estimate of $3.5 billion of revenue lost in 2021. It is an erosion of the nation's wealth through stealth. That's on the average uh, like uh, more than 500,000 uh, barrels per day. And actually the problem is getting worse. And it's getting worse at a time when the country is in a very hard place. Figures reported by the oil companies, you know, and by the NMPC and by DPR amounted to uh, $41.9 billion for uh, crude theft and product theft uh, for a period of 10 years, an average of $4.1 uh, billion you know, uh, dollars per year. In July 2021, the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative released its audit report revealing a loss of 42.25 million barrels of crude oil in 2019, valued at $2.77 billion. Everybody uh, is talking about this because the country is in dire need of revenue. We, we estimatedly lost uh, $3.5 billion uh, to crude oil theft in 2021. Uh, the total amount of money we made from oil for the federal government in 2020 was about that, was 1.5 trillion naira. You know, so this is the bleeding that the country cannot afford. And one of the reasons why you know, these uh, major uh, international oil companies are divesting, especially from onshore, is because of this uh, theft. They lose most of the production you know, and all of that. So the incentive for them. And also, it also makes Nigeria very uncompetitive. They would rather go where you know, they don't have to incur all this cost. The federal government set up an interministerial committee on the recovery of crude oil and illegally refined petroleum products in the Niger Delta in September 2021, with a mandate drawn from the provisions of the Assets Tracing, Recovery and Management Regulations 2019. A member of President Mohamed Buhari's Economic Advisory Council, Besmak Rewane, thinks it is a deep-rooted problem not dealt with at infancy. Cumulative years of negligence in terms of, in terms of the security agencies, the policymakers, to understand that when you create an opportunity for graft, if you create an opportunity for arbitrage, people will take it and then ex extend it and begin to affect every, uh, everybody. When illegal activity now becomes 20-30% of total activity, 
then you have a problem. And there's, there's what you call enlightened self-interest, those who will now fight to keep it that way. So what we had bunkering, 10,000 barrels, 20,000 barrels, we went bunkering and stealing of oil and diversion of oil now becomes two, 300,000 barrels a day. Then the amount of money being stolen and the amount of money being diverted is huge enough, right, to destabilize the country itself. So that's where we are. So the economic consequences is leading to political, uh, a, a political disaster because right now we have the criminal enterprise having maybe, if not more, revenue than the legitimate government of the country. The economist, banker and financial analyst is concerned about the mindset of a growing number of persons who are angry over the mismanagement of funds meant for the development of a region with a worrisome rating by Wikipedia as one of the most polluted in the world. The moral persuasion in this case and arguments is that if those that we've charged with using our revenues for the common good are inefficient, incompetent, and corrupt, then we can no longer look up to them. So what do we do? We steal the oil, and they do not believe it's stealing it. We are taking our own oil, taking the law into our hands, using the illegitimate revenue to take care of ourselves. So the social contract between the governed and the governing broken down, and that becomes a moral argument for justifying the unjustifiable. In the last few months, Nigeria has managed to draw up 1.2 million barrels of crude oil per day, leading to a loss in foreign exchange. Selling at $70 per barrel, the country may lose up to $1.08 billion in February if it fails to meet the production quota of 1.701 million barrels per day demanded by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Now let's return to River State, where Governor Nyesom Ezewon Wike has declared war against artisanal refiners and the environmental menace largely responsible for the black soot in Port Harcourt and other parts of the state. We have drawn the attention of the federal government to this problem and requested for its intervention to stop the activities of illegal bunkering and artisanal crude oil refiners which have been identified as the main sources of the suit pandemic. Unfortunately, the federal government has remained inexplicably silent over our request and even complicit to a large extent with security agencies actively aiding, encouraging, and protecting the artisanal refiners to continue with their harmful activities unabated. We have equally appealed without success to our people engaging in this illegal business to consider its negative effects on our economy, environment, public safety, and public health, and disengage from it in the public interest. Furthermore, all local government chairmen are directed to work with community leaders to locate and identify those behind all illegal bunkering and crude oil refining sites in their localities and report to my office for further action. The River State Governor matches words with action, telling the council chairman to follow suit with coordinated raids on artisanal refinery sites in their domains. Governor Nyesom Wike calls it a war. It's a war. You must arrest them. You must. It doesn't matter how highly placed you are. If you like, be the power ruler. If I need traditional ruler that is involved, pick him for me. Yes, sir. Let him understand that. The law does not respect anybody. Whether you are a dictator, of course you know crime. When you are fighting crime, crime will fight Fair back. Man. So we, we are prepared. Not just talking, we are prepared. From Emohua to Ikweri and other local government areas, the raid is sustained by the foot soldiers of the River State Governor. Governor the boys of Wiki has decided to take the bull by the horn. The activities they are carrying out under this illegal oil refinery is like a man trying to take his or her life. If you go to that place and ask 
question a lot of them who are involved in this practice. They will tell you that on daily basis, they lose people in those sites. People die out of explosion. People die out of those gases, gases coming out. People die out of a lot of issues happening in that site. And they're burying them in the mostly. A lot of grave sites are surrendered in that area. That is not the way to grow. And this war is total. Over a thousand sites where crude is being refined illegally. On a daily basis, I lose not less than 20 to 30 of our citizens in the local government. All the pipes you see bend this way and that way, all have functions. Here, they don't have that kind of technology. They just go in a crude way to refine these things. And it gets up to a point where what, you, what they produce is gas. And once it is gas, the whole place becomes highly inflammable. And they are roasted in their numbers. And that's why the governor of River State declared it as a war. The prevailing notion is that the sustained advocacy against the environmental menace is devoid of any political undertone. It is simply to save the environment on the one hand and on the other, the protection of public health. In January 2017, Nigeria's Vice President embarked on a tour of the Niger Delta. <laughs> Professor Yemi Oshimbajo's visit was an opportunity to bond with the people and to appreciate the ecological challenges plaguing the oil-rich but underdeveloped region. We're very confident that the integration of artisanal and modular refinery operations into the oil and gas sector will not only promote the inclusion of more local content in the industry, it will advance the use of homegrown technology in the refining of petroleum products. It will also promote the availability of petroleum products, stabilize prices, eliminate shipping costs, and provide employment opportunities for the young people in the region and in Nigeria in general. Because this nascent industry of artisanal and modular refinery operators will be regulated, of course the environmental degradation long associated with illegal refining activities, crude oil theft and pipeline vandalism will be mitigated and eliminated. That vision, however, seems to be slow in attaining reality. In the meantime, Governor Inyesom Ezenwon Wike's war against artisanal refiners to end the black soot in the state is yielding fruits with testimonies of improved air quality in Port Hackett and its environs. What, however, is the primary concern of residents of River State is the permanent solution to the problem. They have been able to reduce the cost of petroleum product, meaning that we can have cheap petroleum. It's possible. So let's deploy local technology. That's the message they are sending out. It's not enough to blacklist them, but take advantage of the experience and expertise they've been able to gather and boost it with modern technology. Put them into cooperatives, into business groups, and deploy the necessary supervision to ensure that we build efficient modular refineries that will be beneficial to us and make available petroleum products at very cheap rates, which they have been able to prove going forward. When last did you hear of uh, uh, scarcity in kerosene or diesel around the Niger Delta or in the country? They have filled that gap. So if through crude method, people have been able to come up with, with this kind of uh, uh, practice that is actually serving the economy of the country and West Africa, I think that Nigeria should tap into that knowledge and see how we can organize what they are doing and stop the crude method. Train these boys, look at the capacity that they have developed in that sector, artisan mining practice that will be environmentally friendly and government can coordinate, use it to create jobs for the young people in the Niger Delta. 
create an economy so that government do not lose the kind of money they are losing. And then ultimately we have a win-win, peaceful and clean environment. Each of the state governments should create at least one or two refinery parks in their state where each these artisanal refiners will be kept as a park. And then we also engaged with the Ministry of Petroleum and worked on them allocating crude to the artisanal refiners and then they refine it legally, taking out uh, diesel, then petrol, then uh, DPK. In 2019, River State was producing 21.43%. Now that is approximately 344,000 barrels per day of the entire oil produce in Nigeria. Now that figure is predictably lower today due to sustained activities of crude oil theft three years after. Such activities are also reported in Bayelsa, Delta and other states of the region sending danger signals to a dwindling Nigerian economy whose oil production level fails to meet the OPEC quota of 1.701 million barrels per day. That situation has made Nigeria to lose its exalted position to Libya as number one in oil production in Africa. Ofietime George, Arise News.